Hello and welcome. This is going to be our lecture video for September 21st through 22nd. We're going to be talking about perimeters today. We'll also do a little bit of review. Uh, you don't have to take notes on these next couple of slides, uh, but definitely these slides at the end where we're doing some perimeter problems. Uh, but first, uh, I wanted to show you this picture. This is a box fort I built with my advisement class a few years ago. And I want you to estimate how many boxes are in this fort and then explain how you made your estimation. All right, I'll embed a question here for you to do that. Okay, and the correct answer was this box fort took 110 boxes. All right, so yeah, estimation is an important skill in math. Hopefully you explained well how you made your estimation there. Uh, Goal for today is to review combining like terms, distributions, substituting values into expressions, and to be introduced to L-shaped areas, which are also called composite areas. But I call them L-shape. Uh, y, to get an idea for all the different jobs a variable can do. So uh, let's imagine we are heading out to Taco Bell after class, and I'm feeling extra hungry, so I order a number three and a number six from Taco Bell. Number three is three crunchy tacos and a drink. And a number six is two chalupas, a taco and a drink. What would I actually receive from Taco Bell? Well, one thing I'm doing is I'm representing the order with variables that I have to write out. You know, taco, Pepsi, chalupa, taco, Pepsi, that's a lot of writing. When I could say three tacos is three T. A Pepsi is just a P. And a Chalupa is just a C. All right. Now, instead of just going to the, uh, you know, when I order this, instead of going to the drink machine two separate times, they could just go once and fill up two drinks to be efficient. So even though the drink was part of two separate meals, since I'm getting both of them, will just fill them both up and hand them to me. Same with tacos. Instead of like grabbing three tacos, then going and doing something else, then going back and grabbing another taco for the, you know, the other part of my order, they'll just grab four tacos all at once and put them in the bag. So, you know, we can represent that. What's actually happening here is we're combining like terms to represent that with variables and just add their coefficients. All right. So the whole order all together, if you add them all together, becomes 2C plus 2P plus 4T. And then that's going to be a lot quicker uh, to assemble and hand over. All right, distributive property. Distributive property allows us to get rid of parentheses by bringing the multiplication from outside to inside a parenthesis. All right, uh, we can see we can distribute forwards backwards, we can distribute to addition or subtraction. That's all this slide is shown here. Do not worry about copying all of these down. Okay, how is the distributive property being shown in this picture below? So a combo meal in this scenario is two tacos plus a drink. This three means that we want three combo meals. So what's happening is we're distributing that three into the two tacos plus a drink to figure out that the total is just six tacos and three drinks. So if a family orders, uh, you know, three combo meals, instead of having to get two tacos, then go to the cooler and get a drink, and then go back and get two more tacos, then go back to the cooler and get another drink, just grab six tacos all at once, grab three drinks all at once, you're gonna be done a lot quicker. There, you know, we're using the dis uh, distributive property to be a lot more efficient at our jobs. All right, how is substitution being shown in the image below? So maybe soccer is a sport we're familiar with. Maybe we recognize the sign. We have this guy wearing number 20. He's going onto the field. Number 19 is coming off. That's what that sign there means. So who is being brought in and who is coming out in this image? Here I'll embed another question for you to answer. All right, and if you said number 10 is coming out and 17 is going on, uh, then you were correct. So when we substitute, oh wait, we have one more. 
how is substitution being shown in this cartoon? So we got this person ordering, she says, I'm going to order a broiled skinless chicken breast, but I want you to bring me lasagna and garlic bread by mistake. So we can substitute in sports. We can also substitute at a restaurant. Uh, she wants the waiter to make a mistake and bring the wrong thing so that she can eat the less healthy meal but feel less guilt guilty. What's important about substitution is that uh, one thing is removed, one thing is brought in. So you know, either a player is removed and a new player is brought in, or a meal is removed and a different meal is brought in, or you can substitute individual things on a plate. That's common. You know, you say, I don't want fries, but can I substitute a salad instead? So you don't get the fries, but then you do get the salad. All right, so when it happens mathematically, a variable comes out and a number goes in. So we've got the expression 5x minus 10 when x equals 8. The x comes out and the 8 goes in. And notice in this uh, picture here, they're using parentheses to do the substitution. I'm encouraging you guys to do that every time you do substitution is use a set of parentheses to make sure we do exponents and negatives correctly. The parentheses are really helpful. So what is 2a plus b when a equals 3 and b equals 4? So we're going to draw an arrow from the a equals 3 to the a, an arrow from the b equals 4 to the b. When we do the substitution, we're going to use a set of parentheses. So 2 parentheses 3 plus parentheses 4. All right, 2 times 3 is a 6. I can drop the parentheses around this 4 because there's nothing to be distributed. And then we bring those together to be a 10. 6 plus 4, 10. Okay, now on to perimeter. This is actually our main lesson for today, so definitely be taking notes on this. What's the perimeter of this shape? Well, perimeter is the length all the way around. If you don't have that definition yet, write it down. Length all the way around. which means that we need every the length of every single line. But there's this thing about rectangles that's really helpful is that if this side is four centimeters, then the opposite side is four centimeters. So opposite side of rectangle is same length. So what would be this length down here? Well, if this side up here is nine centimeters, then this side length is nine centimeters. Now our perimeter would be four plus nine plus four plus nine, going from here all the way around, getting every side once and only once, which equals, that is 26, and then we gotta give it a unit. We give it the unit of centimeters without a squared, because it's just a length, 26 centimeters all the way around. All right, now this is what I call an L shape or a composite shape. We gotta find the perimeter of this. Notice two sides are missing. So that's the big thing is we need to figure out these two side lengths. So pause the video now, sketch this shape. All right, now let's figure out what these two side lengths are. So the only rule we're allowed to use is that rectangles have uh, opposite side lengths that are the same. So what we're going to do is we got to cut this into rectangles and that's going to help us figure out what these lengths are. So I'm going to cut right here. And I think just that one cut should be good. You could have also cut right here and cut it into three rectangles or just right here and cut it into this big rectangle and this small rectangle. But just here is good. All right, so this long rectangle at the bottom has this side is five, so this length right here must also be five feet. And I'll just write five so I don't get too many units going in here. But if this whole thing is 12, then this piece over here must be seven so that they still add up to 12. So the whole thing is 12, five and seven make 12 meaning that this piece down here is seven. All right, we've solved for one of the missing lengths. Now let's do it on the other thing. 
If this is 8, then this dotted line must be 8. And this dotted line plus this missing section would have to add up to 15. So this length here must also be 7, because an 8 and a 7 make 15. Now we can add up the perimeter. And I'll start from the 12 and make my way around this way, adding them up. So 12 plus 8 plus 7 plus 7 plus 5 plus 15, and then stop because we're back down around to the 12. Equals, and then let's actually calculate this. 12 and an 8 make 20. 7 and 7 are 14, 5 and a 15 are also 20. See, that's 34 plus 20. 54, and then we got to give it a unit. We say the unit here is feet. And if we don't say a unit, then we just say units. All right, perimeter of this. Sketch it, maybe try it on your own. Now let's figure it out. I'm going to cut it. I'll cut it right here. So this length here is 6. To make 9, we need this to be 3, which means we need this to be 3. This is 4. To make 12, then we need this to be 8, because 4 and 8 make 12. All right, so we figured out that this is 3 and 8. Now we can add up all the way around. So 9 plus 4 plus 8. 3 plus 8 plus 6 plus 12. Pair them off. Or just plug this whole thing into your calculator. I'm okay with that. And we get 24 plus 18. 34, 42. And we give it the unit of centimeters. All right, now we have one more really tough one. This isn't even an L shape. It's just a mix of a bunch of rectangles smushed together into this composite shape. Can we find the perimeter? All right, so hopefully you have sketched it. We have almost every single length, except for we're missing this one right here. So let's, what we're gonna do is we gotta cut it into rectangles. So I'm gonna cut right here. And right here, so I get a straight line, including the one that's missing, that we know that that whole line is nine centimeters because of opposite sides of rectangles have the same lengths rule. Also, these are smaller rectangles. We know that this is three across there, and then this is four across here. The whole thing has to be nine, it's already seven, so this has to be two right here. Now we can just add them all up. 5 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 6 plus 9. And I'm back around to the 5. Let's see what we got. We got a 9. That makes a 4. That makes a 6. That makes a 15. We have a 13 and a 21. And keep adding, and we get a 34. Give the unit of centimeters, and we're done. All right, I'll embed a few more of these composite shapes here. That'll be that for this video. Have a good rest of your day.